Hey, Mike, what do Kelly Slater and PT have in common? I don't know. They're both world champs? Nope. They both own Endless Summer Box Set. Oh, my God. Rad. You guys, you can get it, too. The link's in the show notes. Everybody, welcome to the Quivercast, where we chat with surfers from all around the world, from all walks of life, and we get their story. Find us at www.thequivercast.com. I am Mike, your host. Let's get into the show. Hello, everybody. This is Mike here with the Quivercast, and I'm super excited to have a super special guest, Mr. Denny Alberg. How are you, Denny? Great. Hi, Mike. Good to good to talk to you again. Yes, I'm so stoked right now. Super stoked. I heard you're coming to Oceanside down here in San Diego, and you're going to be uh, doing a little event on the 28th of September here at the California Surf Museum. That's right. Before I start, I want to congratulations on having Quiver Cast going. We met at Rincon a couple of years ago. Yep. Thank you. So way to Way to go. You still have it going. Yeah. So I'm so glad to talk to you again. We're excited. We're doing a big Wednesday book signing at the California Surf Museum on, on the next Wednesday, actually, the 28th. It's uh, something I've been look, looking forward to doing. And we're going to have my my band. Well, it's actually my girlfriend and I that uh, are playing called the Wrinkled. We're the Wrinkled Teenagers. Yeah. And, and we play a variety of old surf music, you know, Dick Dale stuff. And then we do original surf tunes. We'll play for about an hour right in the beginning. It opens up at 6 o'clock. Okay. And we're going to have an exhibit of old photographs from Malibu. Uh, memorabilia from my collection from Big Wednesday. So that'll be on, on big, that'll be an exhibit on boards, blown up photos. And So what can I tell you about the event? Okay. Well, you kind of told us a lot already, but we'll break it down a little bit because I'm excited. I kind of want to know what I'm getting stored for because I'm going for sure. I'm 100% going. I'm so excited. Glad to hear it. Big yeah. Wednesday, first off, mine and probably most surfers' favorite movie of all time, hands down. That's nice. So, okay. So, you're going to be coming and your band's playing, you and your girlfriend, and the Wrinkled Teenagers. Is that correct? Is that the name? Yes. Okay. So we talked about them in a previous interview, and now I get to finally see you guys. So that's cool. You oh, also, good. yeah, you're also going to be bringing your uh, your new book along. I'm hoping the Big Wednesday, the Deluxe Anniversary Edition hardcover, right? Yeah, absolutely. It came out in last year in hardcover. It was a, a normal publisher put it out, and John Millius and I. Are, are excited to actually finally have a hardcover version of the big Wednesday novel. And so I'll have a whole stack of them there for sale. The book came out really great. It's a kind of a deluxe edition. It's got a lot of extra things in there, like some photos, essays by different surfers and got an afterword. It's got glossary of surfing terms and all kinds of special things in there that, that besides just the novel itself, so, um, and I'll have some posters with me too that people haven't seen. It was in a variety magazine. It's wow. Beautiful. We made a poster out of it. It was an advertisement for the movie. Wow. And, uh, so we made the poster out of it. Killer. So it's not the normal movie poster that people have seen. It's, it's different. So I'm going to have that too. A limited edition kind of thing. Like there's only, yes. oh, rad. Cool. Yeah. We're just. You know, I, I just wanted to say, you know, the the theme of the the show and the book signing is the uh, roots of Big Wednesday. Cool. And because I really wanted to to kind of give a sense of what the movie and the book, which are the same story, what it came from, and and it's really about er the early days of of California surfing. You know. The best way I can think of it is I was talking to L.J. Richards, who grew up, grew up in L. He was born in Oceanside and started surfing in 1952. Yep. 
And he was telling me about those days. I mean, there was 12 surfers in all of Oceanside, mm-hmm. you know. They had every spot to themselves. I'm sure they went down to Swami's and nobody was there, just a handful <laughs> of guys. <laughs> Swar- it, wasn't Swar- it wasn't Swarmies back then. That's you know? right, and, yeah. Amazing. They were, they, were, they were begging for someone to come out with them. Oh, God, I couldn't imagine. And, you know, so he, he went all through the 50s like that. And, and and Phil Edwards was there. That was his his king, and they just had this purity of surfing. He, it was all wood boards, so it was all before it had been commercialized at all. You know, it was a kind of an unknown sport. You know, and the the point is, all the way up and down the coast, that was the same thing was going on. Surfing was in its infancy. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, in Malibu, our thing was. Uh, we had our heroes, just like everybody had Phil Edwards, their hero in Oceanside. We had our guys. Of course, Tube Steak had a shack on the beach. Yeah. And and I saw that as a kid when I was growing up. So I was influenced right from the very beginning. My brother Kemp Albrecht started in 56. So I was influenced by early Malibu. And the things that happened, just the fact it was such a kind of a wild country beach then and the, all these characters would show up and it was a, a great venue to show off your surfing because it was a perfect wave and so i was lucky to have a brother like Kemp and see all this uh surfing evolve from the, from the early days and it was such an amazing time that it'll never never be happen again it was a certain time in history you know that the purity was there there wasn't any lifeguard it was very little restrictions um it was very simple. You know, you just went to the beach, plenty of room. And then it, it started to disappear because uh, more people came in, you know. And so that's really what the what the story, a, a Big Wednesday is a historical novel in a way because it tells this history. It's kind of laced with historical facts that really happened. And everything that happened in the movie is, is actually something that happened. We just changed the names. To... <laughs> and that's what you guys did, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the parties, the, the big party was at our house. I mean, my mom was Mrs. Barlow. Yes. And she was pretty lenient, you know, um, <laughs> and let us go hog wild. You know, we had the party room in the in the back. And, and then what we went through during the 60s, you know, we of course, we had to face Vietnam. And, and uh, you know, we do break it up by the, the four seasons. You know, it starts off the summer, 61, and then goes to the... The fall of 68, you know, and then the winter of, uh, I mean, the fall of 65, then the winter of 68, and then Big Wednesday, the spring of 73. So it covers a span, you know, all through the 60s. And a lot of people went through that, can relate to that. Hmm. But the the thing, the main theme is friendship and what surfing, the bonds that surfing brings together people. Yes. And love. Long-lasting friendships that can last a lifetime. And, and it's surfing's unique that way. It's just there's something about it. You go through it together, especially when you're young and and you're you're friends for life, you know. And you still surf together if you're lucky, you know. <laughs> so it's got those elements. And so the book the book is a fun read. I'm glad to have it there and and have bring it to Oceanside. I'm so excited. The books uh, you will sign those books for us, will you? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Mike, we're, we're going to have a couple of videos first. After the reception, you know, with the wrinkled teenagers playing music, and, the, and we'll have this uh, photo display. People can check out the photos. Yep. You no, know, they'll have uh, beer and wine there or whatever, snacks, and hang out, a little reception. Then, then I'm going to show, I'm going to show a couple of videos. Mm-hmm. That, that, again, it's about the roots of Big Wednesday, so it's got some Malibu history. It's laced. The it's one of the interviewing me in about ten years ago, and I'm it's on the beach at Malibu, and uh, it's laced with old photographs of Malibu. So it, it kind of gives you a sense of what it was like. And then Ira Opper had a, a film called The Legends of Malibu, and he allowed us to take the best interviews and make about a ten minute movie in there. So rad. It's got all the all the classic guys, some of them are no no longer living. I mean, it's got Lance Carson and Tube Steak passed away and Dale Belsey and Bruce Brown and Mike Doyle and and all these, uh, you know, pioneer guys. Clay, we, we captured them on the beach in 1985. The interviews are taken. Wow. 
So, so it, they really tell the story of old Malibu, and, and it's really the the theme of Big Wednesday is is Malibu and and what we what we went through, you know, and why we love right surfing, why it was such a passionate thing for us. Yeah, I have a question. I have a question about the book. When yeah. you were writing the book, were you were you mentally going back into that the the dates, the early sixties in your head? Does that make oh, sense? absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was. I was telling you, I was just a grubby surfer with an old rusty station wagon. Yes. And I got this call to help me write this the movie, and I'd never written a movie before. <laughs> Next thing I knew, I knew I had a past of going to the Burbank Studios and Warner Brothers, you know, and, and uh, I had I could have my own. I had a parking space with my name on it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> And we'd rumble in, I'd go uh, rumble in there and then go to his office and we'd, we'd sit around. There was a couple of producers and what we, all we did was just talk old Malibu stories with the tape recorder <laughs> going, you know, just, just started rambling of our memories and girlfriends that we had or, you know, fist fights or rivalries or anything we could think of that was fun and funny and crazy. And, and, and it was all stuff. I think people relate to it because they went through it too or are going through something similar now, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we did. It was, and then I would just break it down and, and fashion a story out of it, you know? That's right. Yeah. Every surfer can relate to big Wednesday 100% because we've lived this life of, you know, being kids and, and surfing and friendships and so forth. You know, it's a very relatable movie. Yeah. And then you grow up and then people go off to different directions and it, Correct. There's a you know you change you have to deal with time and the change of times and but there's something that holds you together you know yeah I've had so many guys come up to me and go that's my life man you know I did that Thanks yes so. and, and I'm so glad because that's what we were, that we we're trying to convey that and the fact that it's gotten through to some people that's really gratifying you know yeah I mean and if you watch the movie which I watched it about six months ago again I usually watch it once or twice a year. Nice. And, and the book, I know I'm going to put like, I'm going to be, I probably would lose some sleep reading that book, to be honest with you. But, um, I'm excited for you. <laughs> um, it just, it's just relatable to everybody that serves a hundred percent. And I watch it. It's, it still holds today. That, that film. It's just, and so the book is just something else I can just, I'm going to for sure put it in my catalog of favorite well, books. You know, I'll tell you, Mike, uh, most people don't know it. Big Wednesday began as a novel. And in 1970, actually, I got together with John and he started telling me, you know, he really wanted to write this book called Big Wednesday. Hmm. And he had not much idea. He wrote some pages and we just talked stories then about Malibu. And I think he ended up with 30, the beginning, very beginning part, about, you know, 30 pages all together. And he wrote a query letter to a big time uh, New York book, book agent and all this, you know, and that's in the book. It's a classic query later. <laughs> cool. It was, I think it was 71. He wrote it. And so I was just, ta- I was just his, his friend. We, we met at the beach. We were pals surfing Malibu together in the early sixties. And, and ne- all of a sudden he was a big time movie guy. You know, he, he was one of our friends that actually were making movies and he got so busy making movies. He dropped that project. So the novel never got written, but we did get together and complete the story as a script. Yes. In about 60, you know, 76 and the movie came out in 78. Mm -hmm. Well, there was no book really, you know, and, and over the years, you know how it caught on gradually through the video market and then the DVDs, it was on TV. People began to to know, but it was kind of a sleeper film, you know, didn't Mm -hmm. do good when it first came out, but slowly it got this kind of called status, but there was a missing thing. There was no book. You know, they sold millions of videos and DVDs, but no one even knew there was a book. Yeah. Or, or didn't know, but there was no book. And so, uh, it was a little paperback right when it came out, but it was just a little movie tie in and they didn't, didn't promote it and they dropped it when, because the movie didn't do well at first. So mm. there was no, there was no book. And so that my goal about 10, eight years ago, I decided I'm going to complete that dream. So I started working all the time in fashion into the novel it is now and trying to make it a good read, make it really like a, 
the best way I wanted to, I could say everything I wanted to say in a book. You have time to expand and get in people's heads and lace it with stuff that got cut out of the movie. Like the love affair was cut out a lot. And mm. So, so that's, so it's a different experience, but it is the purity of big Wednesdays. There is definitely the story of big Wednesday, big Wednesdays there. And just in more detail. Yeah, it's just in a different format. It's in a novel, yeah, so you cool. can fill in the you fill in the blanks with your mind, you know. <laughs> okay. In case uh, people don't know, when you started surfing, did you think um, that you would be surfing your whole life? Oh, I knew it. You knew it. Okay. Yeah. Well, once I discovered how fun it was to ride a wave, it was like nothing I'd done, and I'd played all the sports, you know. Yeah. But there was something about the beauty of nature. In a wave, a perfect wave, and we were lucky to to live it, you know, near Malibu and get it perfect offshore mornings to ourselves, and then go to Rincon in the winter and get it perfect. We were just thrilled all the time. And yeah, we were totally, totally obsessed. And the idea of going away from surfing I, was unthinkable. It was mm-hmm. just, too, it was too much in my blood, and I just had no idea. I never wanted to quit, and I didn't. So, um, you know, I'm. I'm 75 now, and I, I just won. I got second place in the Malibu so, Classic so Surfing Contest. That's awesome. And it was good to see everybody there. It was got a lot of guys from San Diego there, and uh, it was a good weekend. That was, a, you know, recently. So I'm still surfing pretty good. I, I'm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's just because I didn't quit. <laughs> yeah. It, was there ever a period in time where you did not surf, or you took a little break? Oh, I maybe slacked off a little bit, okay. you know. During the hippie days, you know, I mean, there's little ups and downs. <laughs> During the hippie, that's funny. Sometimes, sometimes music got in the way. I was okay. a muso for, I was a muso for a while. You know, I but now I I combine music and surfing. That's perfect. I mean, best lifestyle ever, really. <laughs> yeah. So let's say you're in Southern California. You're looking for Oceanside. Everybody, it's not that far. It's an hour or two from your home. If you live in Huntington Beach, there's no reason. California Surf Museum. It's on. Uh, 312 Pier View Way in Oceanside. And you're going to want to mm-hmm. call and get tickets because you want to reserve your spot there. And that number. Yeah, it's not a not that big of a place. It's so a small might, venue. Might, it's yeah. like this. So, and everyone gets to shake your hand and talk to you too, right? Oh, I love it. I love talking to everybody and I'm, I'll be available. You know, we'll have a little talk story session. Then I'm just going to hang out and anybody wants me to sign a book to them. Um, and the people that can't make it, they can order a book online and have it assigned to them with all, if they tell me their name and, and when they order it, they'll, I'll, uh, they'll let me know and I'll personalize it for them. So how, how, do you, it. how do you order those through you personally or through, through, the, through the website? Yeah. Okay. Through the California surf museum oh, website. They, got it. Yeah. Right. They are advertising, advertising that. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, well, so the California Surf Museum, I didn't know they have them online, so that's even better. That's the best way to get it, really, if if not in person. In person is the best way to go. Yeah, I, and, and if not that, too, I mean, it's on Amazon, and all, you know, you can go to any bookstore, and they probably don't have it, but they they can order it, you know. But okay. it's pretty easy. To, it's good. Yeah, it's a Google it, and Big Wednesday novel, and it comes right up. Yes. The, the the pictures and stuff, you want to talk a little bit more about detail about that? Like the pictures you're going to be showing are. Yeah, we did a, we did the similar event, a big Wednesday, big Wednesday, uh, well, book signing event in Malibu at the Brothers Marshall just opened a new surf shop. It's mm-hmm. called the Brothers, Brothers Marshall, good surfers, Trace and Chad Marshall. We had a great turnout. Lance Carson was there and John Milius, who's my co-author, and all the good surfers from Malibu and just a bunch of local people. We had a blast. Wrinkle Teenager. Anyway, so we had a, a display of photos, and what we did, they blew them up. They're, you know, enlarged, so it wow. makes it really fun. Filled up three walls. Wow. And so that's what we're going to I have the same photos I'm bringing to Oceanside. We're going to put them up on, on display boards. So it tells a nice, uh, some good Malibu history, you know, and, and some, some, uh, Rare uh, behind the scenes Big Wednesday photos. Yes, and, and some surprises, you know. But it's fun to look at, you know. You sit there, have a beer, and, and listen to the band. Look at the photos. It's kind of a reception, and and then we'll start the show. So. Awesome! So it's a, this can be a fun-filled night, everybody. I think so. Yeah, yeah it sounds really fun. Like 
I haven't done anything in a couple of weeks. I'm pretty stoked. <laughs> Get me out of the house on a Wednesday. Well, your, your name's on the guest list. So uh, appreciate worry. that. Thank you, Denny. <laughs> yeah, I'm you stoked. Okay, everybody. So um, California Surf Museum. Oceanside, you can Google it if you don't know how to get there. You do Google Maps. It'll take you right there. Parking's free. It's five. I think it's, uh, if you're a member of the California Surf Museum, I believe it's five bucks to get in. If you're a non member, 10 bucks. So you get 10 bucks, you get a fun night. Like Denny said, you can have a couple beers, look at some rad old surf history pictures that we're going to have on display or Denny's going to have on display. Some three short films, right, Denny? Yeah, and, yeah, and then the one, the one too that I forgot to mention, Little Wednesday is a short film. Yeah, that I took on the set. I had a Super 8 camera that that, that we used in those days and took movies. Dude, and yeah. so I put together this ten minute film that's really fun. It shows all the actors and all the locations and Hollister Ranch and El Salvador. So, Brad. So everybody, yeah. um, I expect to see you guys because it's going to be a good night here in Oceanside. Yeah, that's next Wednesday, big Wednesday, September 28th. Perfect, and on a Wednesday. <laughs> a week from now. It's uh, a Wednesday, next Wednesday, September 28th. All right. About six. Awesome. Yeah. Any, anything else we're missing here, Denny? Well, if I forgot anything, you got to come to the show and see what I forgot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. We've got to keep some surprises. It's going to be fun. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm excited. So, all yeah, right, everybody. So much. Everybody, this is uh, Mike and Denny, and we will see you on the 28th California Surf Museum. Be there. All right. We're out of here. Thanks, Mike. I'll see you. Talk to you soon, Denny. Hey, you guys, Endless Summer Box Set. This thing is legit. It's authentic, numbered certificate in it. It has a five-frame film strip. From the original print, you will literally own a piece of history. It has a specially minted bronze medallion. Dude, that thing's sick. Okay, there's so much more here. Go to the show notes. There's a link on there. Go check this piece of history out. This thing's rad. Seriously. Smithsonian American History Museum has it. It took four years of research with 3.5 in production. All hand assembled. This thing's rad. So much to this awesome box set. Remastered DVD. Sharper images than the original film. But dude, this thing's so sick. Link in the show notes.